Hello, I'm Sam and welcome to our year anniversary video blog. We were born to meet someday Our separate lives and separate loves stood in our way I've hit for you When I was first diagnosed with Emmy, I don't think I fully comprehended how much it would affect every aspect of my life. Um, I understood that there would be long periods of time that I would spend in my bed not well, whether it be weeks and months, but I didn't understand how that would then go on to impact on my work, on my social life, on my relationship with friends and families and on my plans for the future. I mean, every day people make plans, you probably only go through with about 5% of them, but you make the plans, it's kind of like when you're told that You've never really had an inkling before that you wanted to climb Everest, but then you're told that you'll never ever be able to climb Everest, and you're a bit like, well, I really want to climb Everest. It's, it's almost, almost kind of like that feeling. Um, I always thought that if I had someone who could have sat down with me and spoke through it all and helped me understand a bit more about what having Amy truly meant and how it took over your, your whole life, then it would have made it a lot easier for me. In the summer, um, I was researching the internet as you do, and I came across a counselling skills course in my local university. And as you guys all know, like during that time I was walking with two sticks, I couldn't walk very far to, to walk any distance kind of knackered me. So to actually say that I was going to commit myself to go to, to uni one night a week um, for the next nine months or so, it was a massive deal for me. Before I could start the course, I had to go for a meeting with the course coordinator. Um, so I got the bus in, this was only the second time I'd actually been on the bus since the whole leg incident had happened. Um, I went for the meeting and as soon as I walked out of the meeting, my legs were killing me, I was absolutely knackered and I thought to myself, oh dear lord. <laughs> How on earth am I actually going to manage to turn up to uni for three hours, one night a week, and not be in my bed for days on end? Um, but I thought I'd two or so um, months to go before it actually started, so I thought, well, I might be a wee bit better by then, I might be able to handle it a bit more. So it did finally come, two months had passed, and I showed up um, thinking that Amy had already taken away quite a lot of um, things for me. I wasn't going to like to take away this opportunity. But for the first few weeks, those three hours, they knackered me beyond belief. My legs were so sore, I was so tired, it would take me days in my bed to recover from going to this class for, for one night a week. And I could see it in, kind of in my mum's face. She was a bit like, oh, I don't really know if you're doing the right thing here. But I'm not a quitter, which makes me a really bad poker player and also sometimes a really bad ME sufferer because I don't know when to say stop. Um, so I continued with it and I just made sure that the day that I was going, I didn't actually get out of my bed until I had to leave to go to uni and I rested for as long as I needed to for however many days after it and over time it got easier um, to the point where it was taking less and less time for me to recover and now I'm at the stage where I can go on a Thursday night, it doesn't impact my next day or the rest of my week at all. Um, I still get lapses in concentration um, throughout the class but it means that I can go home and study what's been said in my own time at my own pace and when my concentration is at its peak. The sense of achievement that um, it's given me to be able to just turn up to this course every week and on top of that learn a new skill, it's undescribable almost. You spend a lot of your time with Emmy unable to do things and having to give up um, activities that you once loved and that were once like a major part of your life. So when you do actually go out there and are able to do something again and achieve something, it's euphoric almost. It's like it's like flying. It's, it's greater than probably anything that I've actually felt in my entire life and it's just turning up to a course every week. It's amazing. Yes, I'm the bright spark. I thought it'd be a good idea to nominate Sam to run with Olympic Torch. It all started when the Olympic Committee invited people to nominate those they thought were inspirational. 
and are a positive effect in the community. And I dare anyone to look at Sam and tell me that's not the case. I went out on a limb to testify my love. I never saw it coming out, it shook me up. Where we stood separated at forever, and I swore I'd never go out on that limb. So I put her name forward and basically told the story of her life so far, basically like a blog does, just without the sweary words. And I was confident that MD at Red the blog would have to back her to run with a torch. So on the 9th of June, get down to Dumbarton with your salmonme.org banner and cheer Sam across the finishing line. To me, a big step towards my recovery was getting rid of my walking sticks and it was something I put a lot of time and effort into. It was something that I really wanted to happen because I was fed up of walking down the street and people staring at me because I was a young girl walking with a walking stick, um, like an old granny. So, what I, over time, I had went down to using the two sticks to the one and then I had got it down to not using any in the house, but I still relied quite a lot on using my stick outside the house because walking indoors, everything's flat, all the surfaces are flat and you don't really, the biggest distance you need to walk is from your living room to the toilet which is about three metres, while they're outside that doesn't really get you out past your driveway. Um, so it took me a lot of time and a lot of effort to get to this point, a lot of physio, um, but eventually one day in February I decided it was time, I was going, I was going my first walk without my stick so popped my earphones in, psyched myself up and I walked out the door and I just kind of, for about 10 minutes, I just kind of focused on putting one leg in front of the other and not falling over and flat on my face because let's face it, I don't want to damage this. Um, after about 10 minutes, I was outside and I suddenly became aware of the Foo Fighters came on in my, in, my, in my ears and it was like, I'm learning to walk again. I believe I've waited long enough, where do I begin? And uh, I just kind of stopped and I, I kind of looked, looked at the skies. Um, I was kind of like, now in films you get those moments where like people have just said like crap happened to them for like the first an hour or something like that and then they run outside and they look at the, look at the heavens and the, it opens up and they get drenched and then suddenly the next day everything gets ten times better, um, except from that it wasn't really raining, it was just kind of spitting, so I wasn't drenched, my hair was just a bit frizzy, I didn't really look as if I was in a film, I just kind of looked like one of those crazy Christians, wanting about looking at the sky, being like, ah, oh, I know I said the world was going to end yesterday, but trust me, it's today, it's today. Um, so after I realised I just kind of looked crazy, I just kind of put my arms back down and, and continued walking, and just soaked in the moment that that was me, my first walk without my stick, it felt, felt pretty good. When Sam got diagnosed with ME, we were all really upset. But I think what I've realised now is that she was never going to let anything stand in her way. Our mantra's always been that she was going to travel the world and help people along the way. And I think even though she's just doing it in a local community now, she still is helping people along the way and nothing, even ME, was going to stop her being who she is. Uh, a few years ago, I read The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. So I really liked it. Um, it kind of intrigued me what why someone wrote a, a book like this, so I decided to do a bit more research into her life and I um, discovered that on her grave she has a quote that says, even amidst fierce flames the golden lotus can be planted. Um, it's an old Buddhist quote and it's kind of became my mantra over the, over the last year, like bad things happen and sometimes really bad things happen but out of them good things can come and my good thing has been this website. So I'd like to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for all your support um, over the past year um, because without it I wouldn't be able to keep on writing and sharing my experiences of ME and helping raise awareness of this really misunderstood illness. So here's to another year ahead of us. Thank you. Well,